Some babies are smaller than others. Oh, hi. I didn't see you come in. I was just here <laughs> singing my song about different baby sizes. Forgot that you guys are here. God, there's so much to talk about, but one of the things I, I would like to start off with is um, I'm going to give you an announcement for the people on the Absolutely Everything Pass. I'm excited to give you an announcement, and the announcement is this. Um, we have decided that um, starting tomorrow, we are publicly releasing our Entrepreneurial Revolution series. So the Entrepreneurial Revolution series is a new kind of interactive, uh, somewhat live and somewhat me talking to you in person, you know, the way we did the Limitation Game Interactive. But we're releasing it as a series. And we release to the public it tomorrow, and you guys can have it tonight. It's, uh, I don't know if it's already put up, but you're going to get it any moment. Um, Amelia Ann says, yes, it's up. So you guys already get it. Now you might go, or you might not go, entrepreneur, that's for business owners, that's for CEOs. I want you to know something that some of you might not have considered, and that's that every one of you is an entrepreneur. Every one of you is an entrepreneur. You might also have a day job sometimes, you might work for other people, but I believe inside of you is a seed that can create a major impact, whether it's just to create an enormous business, whether it's just to create a side income, whether it's just to like get your gift going, whether it's to just do something like paint and get it out to the world, whatever your thing is that we're all entrepreneurs, and many times we've really been trained in the society that life is just about getting a day job and having a job. I mean, that's what politicians campaign about. How many jobs are available? Hey, the economy is growing because of all these jobs. Well, the economy also will skyrocket if more people who are entrepreneurs become entrepreneurs. And I really believe that everyone's an entrepreneur, but most people don't believe that. Most people don't believe that about themselves. They've just been trained that life is have the security of just a job and don't actually realize that there's a gift that's coming out of you that wants to do amazing things. You are an entrepreneur. So it doesn't necessarily mean too that you have to go create the next Amazon, but you sure can just find in you what you are and bring it out to the world. So what we're going to do is we're releasing this episode tonight and we're gonna release several episodes, one a week. It's really, really cool. So it'll come out like a series. And each Absolutely Everything Pass call that we do each Wednesday night for the next whatever weeks we do it, however long it's season one starting, however long we do it, we're gonna have a series of calls and each Absolutely Everything Pass call that we do on the Wednesday night is going to be a discussion about what the last week's episode was about. So we have an episode that we're putting out right now, and it's about learning to connect to your soul and actually learn how to tap into your creativity from the truth versus from society. What do I mean by that? It's, it's crazy because most of us look at ourselves through the eyes of society versus the eyes of nature, the eyes of the universe, the eyes of the moment. And if you really ask the moment, what you are, the moment will tell you you're just love. If you ask the moment what you are, it'll say your creativity, your flow. But if you ask society, if you ask Facebook, it's like you're not enough, you need to fix something. If you ask CNN, if you ask the news what you are, it's like you gotta be something different. You're never enough. And I really think it's fascinating because in society, it's very conflicting. Like in society, it's very, very, very important that you eat at very addictive places like McDonald's, but also that you look like the models on Cosmo. So you're always feeling like shit because you can't ever do it right. But in nature, it goes, you connect to your soul and you eat how you need to eat and you can have whatever body you want. And weirdly, it might even be healthier because you're not doing what you've been trained through advertising all the shit to become. Now, I believe very much as we listen to our heart, there's a creative voice that's trying to come out and we're here to create from a place of love, not fear. And one of the things this episode is going to talk about, to the first episode is gonna talk about, is how uh, much we try to create things out of fear. It's something we've talked about on past Absolutely Everything calls, uh, but 
we often try to create a business out of fear. Like I was bullied as a kid, so I need to create this business to undo that bullying, to, to prove them wrong. Well, that's fear. And it's not going to necessarily actually be sustainable because it's a scared feeling. It's like, I gotta do this to prove I'm enough. But when you actually step into what you are and you're always moving up, because you're not moving from a place of fear, what your nervous system thinks it needs to do, but you're doing what your soul thinks it needs to do, it's actually impossible for your business to fail. It's actually pretty much impossible because you're moving from a place of love, you're moving from a place of up, you're moving from a place of possibility. Now, my entrepreneurial series is going to counter and often be the opposite of many things that we've been trained from different entrepreneurial series, different entrepreneurial classes, they say, do it this way and here's how you sell something. I'm not about teaching you how to sell something because I believe what Steve Martin said just becomes so good that they can't take their eyes off of you. So that's what we're here to learn is what we actually are. Really, actually, actually are. And what you are is amazing. And what I am is amazing. And I'm here to tap into the amazing. And if you listen to it for a while, it'll say, do this. And if you listen longer, it'll say, now do this. And then you do it and your nervous system will acclimate to the move that you just made. And it'll go, I feel a little bit freer. I feel a little bit more me. Now, one thing that came up in the flow group that was really fascinating is what your soul wants to do. And then there's what your nervous system wants to do. And your nervous system says anything we haven't done is dangerous. Anything we haven't done before is dangerous. So for instance, let's say you created a bunch while you were in your house in your childhood. And let's say when you tried to show someone your work, they yelled at you or you got hurt. You could create in your nervous system a belief that my art is something that I use to protect myself from the world and I'm not gonna show anyone because I could get hurt. That's because that was your childhood. But your soul goes, this isn't necessarily true here. The soul goes, we need to expand. We need to extrovert our work. This is actually someone I worked with this morning and we need to extrovert our work. So it's our growth to do what our soul wants to do. And if you do what your soul wants to do, your nervous system will eventually have to acclimate to it. Your nervous system will eventually have to acclimate to what your soul wants to do. And the day that your nervous system is doing the same thing that your soul wants to do, you win the game of life. Are you with me? At one point, most people's soul wants to do one thing and their fear goes, yeah, but that's dangerous. So they listen to this and they're ignoring the soul. But if you keep doing what the soul says, it goes, I want to expand myself. I want to step into something bigger. And then the nervous system goes, yeah, but that's dangerous. We got hurt when we were five years old. Got it. But not everyone is your dad anymore. So we got to honor what's true and prove to the nervous system that it's still safe. And when it experiences that it's still safe, it suddenly slips into and moves into acclimating to what the soul does. And that's when you get all your power. The second your intention beats your habits, you win the game of life. When your intention beats your habits, you win the game of life. And you keep being in your intention and your habits will kick in. It'll have an addiction. It'll go, I want to get love through this thing. I'm not safe here. And you stay in it. I'm not safe here. I'm not safer. Then two weeks goes by and you've proven to yourself you're safe. So it goes, well, never mind. I am safe here. And you've expanded. And we're not here to watch you do the thing that you're doing. We're here to watch you expand. And when people expand themselves, the world changes because then you're a whole person. You're not scared of one side of you. You become a whole person. When you're a whole person, everything's cool. When everything's cool, the universe can go, here's the next step. Here's the next step. I got you. I got you. I got you. So this week at Flow Group, I had two clients that had polar opposite issues and it was amazing one person i know is an amazing amazing artist and she's constantly thinking of keeping her social media up doing different work on the outside and her growth would be actually to cut off her social media and go inside for the year for her to actually just experience what it would be like to create a different piece of her art every day and, and let go of the need to market herself. Now, ironically, what will happen is she'll expand herself so much in her soul by going inward, which was a place that felt unsafe to her because she got so much love from the outside that it would change her. She would be a whole person because she would bring 
more love to her inside and then bring that inside to the expertise that she has on how to market herself outside later. But right now her growth is to meet her soul. And then I have another client that was at the flow group who had the polar opposite. She's an amazing artist, a dear person, one of the most brilliant artists I've ever seen. And she's constantly introverted with her art. So going out of her box is scary to her. So one, I had to stop being on the outside and get her more inside. And one, I had to stop being as much on the inside and get her to go outside because it was much more about the growth. So ask yourself what you need more of. Do you need more introverted, extroverted? Do you need more? What is it that you're scared of? Do you need to be alone more? Do you need to be more expanded more? What is it you need more of? So Alia says, are you doing more flow groups? And my current answer at the moment is no, at least at the way we've been doing it. And the reason is because my growth is to spend a lot of the year with my daughter. My heart says, I need to spend time with my little girl, with my family, and I've been turning down really big gigs so that I can have more and more time at home. It's my growth. Now, here's what's ironic. As I say no to things, I'm seeing new things show up in my body that are bigger than the things that I'm turning down. Why? Because I'm not as well-rounded at just being home for a long period of time, and that's my growth. It's my growth to take a ton of time off. And weirdly, I can tell that will energetically actually do more for my work, for my marketing. I will be more well-rounded by just being around my daughter and doing nothing because I will say that's a no. I'm more interested in doing what I want to do at the highest level. And when you do what you truly want to do, even if the other things that they're offering you, I don't care, we've had job offers that come in that add up to six figure offers for me to go and do crazy, crazy work, more than that even. And that's really nice. But I can feel I need to be in my heart. And by doing that, you know what I'm doing? I'm proving to myself how much my time is worth. Do you get what I'm saying? When you do what you truly want to do, you are proving to yourself and showing yourself emotionally in your body that your time is worth a lot. And when you realize your time is worth a lot, you don't take on bullshit. You're not just flipping through Netflix all day. You're not just saying yes to anybody. You're doing what you need to do. And if someone wants to work with you, you're valuable. Your time is valuable because time is the only thing we actually have a temporary amount of. See, most people do that with money which you have an infinite amount of. You have an infinite amount available. So most people put time second to money. So every decision is, will it cost it a lot of money? And then they sacrifice their time to save money, which believe it or not, costs them more money because you're saying your time isn't worth that much. So your value isn't worth that much. All of that's not worth that much because you're saying I'm much more about you know, saving money and not doing what my heart says. So you're saying money is more important than my heart. And it's when you follow your heart, when you energetically do what your heart wants and you stop making money the factor, you say my heart is the number one thing. And the most valuable thing you could be is connected to your heart. The most valuable thing on this planet you could be, it's worth millions to be connected to your heart. That's the number one thing people want. There's probably a thousand people on the planet that are truly connected to their soul. And eventually people are all going to go, I need that. That's what makes someone a visionary. That's what makes someone a leader. That's what makes you an Oprah, whatever it is. That's what puts you in your power. You being in your truth and doing what you want to do. So for me, my time is so precious and I need more time with my family. I need more time with my daughter. And we've been doing visual uh, visualizations this week. We've been connecting and listening to visual, you know, what I'm envisioning kind of processes. And they're saying, okay, do what you want. Picture you in your highest. And a lot of people are picturing themselves on stages or number one book or whatever. And I'm sitting there with my eyes closed for hours, picturing myself lying on the living room floor and my daughter lying in my arms. That's like the greatest thing to my body right now. That's the greatest thing to my body. And by April, 
I will have been completed with all the tasks that I've committed to and be able to spend April through most of the rest of the year at home. Ironically, I have a book coming out in September and the more I picture myself at home with my daughter, the more sales of the book I can see happening. In other words, I'm moving channels to a place that's even more well-rounded and my value goes up and I can see that the book will do better and I won't be hustling to make it happen because hustling is saying, please buy, please get this, whatever. It's like, no, instead of buying, just please buy instead of marketing like that. We just got to know where the shit you got to have something that's so good. Like this energy is going into the book. This energy is going into the videos. It's me well rounding myself in front of you. And my dare to you is for you to do that because when people see you expand yourself, even if you fall over in front of them, even if you do it wrong, even if you sing off tune, they're seeing you be the artist. You artist and get excited about you more than any art you've ever created. And that's what a real entrepreneur is. A true entrepreneur expands themselves, and the business is a byproduct of their expansion. You are here to expand yourself. Now, many, many people don't expand themselves while they try to expand the business and the business will have to collapse because you don't have a foundation to handle how big the business wants to get. So if you see yourself worth 20,000 a year and the business wants to make 100,000 a year, but you are scared of money, you haven't expanded yourself and it's death to your story that thought money is the root of all evil or money doesn't just grow on trees that you learned when you were a kid, do you get what I'm saying? Then when this gets big, it'll sabotage your nervous system. So your nervous system has to collapse the thing that's getting big. So if you're not in your foundation, if you're not in your soul and your business tries to get bigger than you, it's going to scare the shit out of you. So your business has to match you. And that's one of the things we do in the entrepreneurial revolution. You cannot make something bigger than what you perceive yourself to be. It's impossible. You get what I'm saying? How, and so many people do that. There's many people that become coaches out there that'll teach you all the things and then they're not doing the changes that they're telling you you should do. So you can feel the BS in that. You can feel that's impossible. So I can't do any more than I'm giving myself. And if I spend the year not being with my family and keep working my ass off and doing all the shit, then I can't help anyone pass that level because I don't see anything past that level. So if you want to really impact people, you have to live it. And the entrepreneurial revolution is often about that. There are a lot of tangible things about money, about, about clients, about holding space, about vibration. There's tons of stuff on that. But also the most important thing for an entrepreneur is that you're working on you. I don't care how many strategies you read in another book. It doesn't matter if you don't have the foundation. It doesn't matter if you don't have the foundation. If you're not connected to your soul, the business can't be connected to its soul. So this is what this year is about. And I will be expanding in front of you. And you have to be in that alignment. I will be expanding in front of you and you'll be expanding with me because you can't hear me talk about it and not expand myself. You just feel the bullshit. You'd feel the pressure. You'd feel the manipulation. We have to be in our truth. And when you're in your truth, you don't need external resources to prove your point because you are the truth. When you're in your truth, you don't need over sales tactics, and manipulative things and, and proof from different studies on why your way works. When you're in your truth, you know for real how everything works. And people will come in and they'll try to debate you, but you'll have a year of answers because you actually experienced it versus talking about it. And here's my resource and here's this thing externally. Then you're by yourself with no foundation. So these are things that also came out in the flow group and things that I want you to know we're going to be talking about. But we're creating an ongoing series of several episodes, many, many episodes that are going to have you constantly just doing a little bit each week. And then next week, we're going to do a mastermind about episode one. 
So next week, you will have watched this episode. And there will be an exercise that I give you at the end of the episode. And then next week, when you hop on the weekly call, we're going to discuss it. We're going to mastermind about it. We're going to work together and talk about it. So you get to watch the episode. And how awesome is this? You can ask us questions and we can discuss what you saw. So Lindsay just posted the Entrepreneurial Revolution episode one. So put a bookmark in that. There's the episode going by. Lindsay, please feel free to post it a couple more times. But that's so cool because now we can mastermind and discuss and you can ask questions about the episode you saw and then we'll discuss it. It's so exciting to me. So I'm excited to work with you. I'm excited to connect to you. And no matter what, even if each week you get 1% better, how cool is that? Because in, in 50 weeks, you're 50% better in a year, right? But you're going to go faster than that too. And I'm here to just do, here's a little bit and you do it. A little bit and you do it. We don't want to be the answer to everything, but we want to just give you a little bit. And if it helps you a little bit more, a little bit more, awesome. Then each week you can ask us questions about that episode. So there's episode one. And this week you're going to watch it, do some of the exercises in it. And then we'll discuss it next Wednesday. So please bookmark Wednesday because this is something I feel is really, really worth a lot but it's worth what you do with it. Do you get what I'm saying? It's worth what you do with it. So if you hear this content and kind of half-ass it, one thing that I'm, I kind of am slightly worried about is we made it so affordable, so we get scared you won't value it as much. You know, entrepreneurial products often range in the $1,000 to $10,000 mark. So people might just think, ah, oh, this is something I'm paying a cheap monthly thing for, so it's not that valuable. I'm hoping that you know this is something that could be worth a ton if you move as if you invested huge in it. I want you to move as if you put a few thousand dollars into it. I'm not saying do that. I'm saying you're getting it already. But move as if it's a big deal for you. Make this priority. Because if this was something you paid $10,000 for, you'd probably not do anything but it and you probably wouldn't distract yourself from it. But Often what we find is the cheaper we go, the less people value it. The cheaper we go, the less people value it. So it's very important to me that you know, <clears throat> it's very important, no, Gary Vee's not in the audience. That's a funny thought. So it's very important to me that you know and move as if this is valuable, right? So it's very important to me that you do because I'm so here to create a higher value with you. We want to change your value, your value. And remember, your value has nothing to do with how much money you have. This is something also talked about in the episode, and you'll really be able to look at this closer. But your value has nothing to do with how much money you have. A huge mistake in the world is they say what someone's worth, and usually they're referring to their bank account or their assets, right? Oh, this guy's worth $10 million, right? Because he has $10 million in houses and, and in the bank. That person's not worth $10 million because some people have developed a lot of skills and they could have no money and be worth $10 million. And there's some people that inherited money and could be worth nothing because they have no skills. So what is your value? In other words, if you wiped out Oprah's bank account tomorrow, she could probably bring millions back into her bank account the next week right? Because her value as a producer, her value as a listener and a communicator is really big. If you wiped out someone's account who didn't have any skills but won the lottery, their value is suddenly zero. So you want to be worth a lot even if you have no money. It doesn't matter what you have, it's what you're worth. And how do you raise your worth? By raising your consciousness, by raising your awareness, by you leaping into your soul. So you're here to raise your value, not your dollar value. That can be a byproduct. But what's your value on the planet? If the dollar got completely wiped out, would you be valuable? Or is it just the money that I have in the bank account is all I am, right? So that's what we're here to do is expand that. And we're so excited to bring so many more things to the Absolutely Everything Pass this year. You know, eventually we're going to have the full digital meditation retreat. We're talking about so many different things to make the Absolutely Everything Pass more and more insane and well-rounded. 
And one of the things we want to do is make sure you get so much financial and internal spiritual value with the entrepreneurial revolution. So you are uh, welcome to see episode one after this call is over. You can't watch it during this because I'm, I'm, you got to watch me. So, and then you can get off and watch me. So, so excited to be with you. So thankful for you. And I'm so excited about you guys growing. I'm so excited about this mattering. I'm so excited about this expanding us. So yeah, I'm happy. I'm back home. We kind of moved some pictures around. I'm realizing you probably don't, this is kind of cool. I want to show you something. I'm just seeing it in behind me. I want to show you what it is. One of my favorite movies is Back to the Future. And this is a picture of me with Tom Wilson who played Biff in Back to the Future. And I don't know if you remember the matches in Back to the Future 2 when he, uh, you know, when he suddenly gets the alternate 1985 and the matches and the cocktail napkins. He gave me them from the set and uh, is a dear friend. So I got these kind of cool pictures. I'm kind of really enjoying making my house fun. You know what I'm saying? And he gave me that. I also have, I'm just bragging now, but this is a picture of me with Carol Burnett, which was one of my favorite moments in my life, the legendary Carol Burnett. And I'm just kind of making the house fun and doing different things. This is my growth because I lived in hotels for 20 years. So I'm having so much fun being at home. Now, for many of you, you might have been home a lot. But for me, I've never done this. I have never done this. Like I have spent, I have spent so many years living in a hotel. And my old nervous system says, I need to be in a place that I know I'm checking out of tomorrow. That's how life works to me. There's a maid. I go in there. I live with a suitcase. And for me, huge growth is happening for me to just be at home. And it might sound so funny after having done really crazy things in my life, but I'm sitting here flipping out about that I'm doing dishes, that I'm cleaning out the garage, that I'm going to get it repainted, that we're repiping the place. The things that I'm doing right now are totally things that many people are like, yeah, that's normal. I'm like, for me, it's crazy. I'm flipping out about doing laundry for 10 loads in a day and, and like really like just taking care of the house and like creating something new. This is like the first year of my life that I have an actual home. For me, I've just been on the road. I've probably been on 10,000 flights in my life. And to be home and just sit still and relax is the craziest experience for me. So for you, it might be to get out of the house. It might be to travel. But to me, a vacation is my couch. <laughs> to me, a vacation is not to go to another country because I'm always on a plane. So I just want you to know, no matter where you are, no matter where you are in your life, you have things that are your truth for your expansion. And so many people think I should do what that person did. But you might, th if I was doing that, I would think, so I got to get out more. If I listened to a lot of what other people did, I would think I got to get out more. I got to travel more. No, my growth is to sleep in. My growth is to take weeks off and do nothing but hold my daughter. This is all new. I'm having like a reverse midlife crisis, right? Where I'm suddenly like, oh, I totally want a minivan and to do nothing. I want to listen to Hall & Oates. That's not new. I always listen to Hall & Oates. But Everyone else, you have a midlife cry. I had kids when I'm 18, right? Like it's time for me to become a rock star. That's awesome. For me, I'm like, I did the touring. I did the Comedy Central. I did the theaters. I want to be home. So what's yours? It doesn't matter what it is. It could be a major leap for you to sit on the couch for a month. It could be a major leap for you to sit in the woods. It could be totally a major leap to get out and travel. It could be a leap for you to work out. If you've worked out your whole life, it could be a total leap for you to stop. Do you get what I'm saying? It's just changing energy so that you're more of what you are now and your nervous system can let go. Your nervous system can let go and go, I'm not what I was yesterday. So for me, that's what I'm doing right now. And that's a little bit about what's going on with me. And I'm so happy to be with you guys and share that with you. And I think it'd be fun to go to a couple of your questions. It's so fun to read your guys' amazing posts. It's so fun to kind of talk to you. I'm reading what you guys are writing while I'm talking. So many amazing comments. 
And you have your bracelet on, Carla. Yes, Carla and everyone from my 630 group gave me a bracelet customized. It says patience because that's my intention word. My intention and what I am is patience. And whenever I feel stressed, I go back to this and go, patience. The thing isn't working the way I thought I wanted it to, get patient. I think they made it for me, actually. So, <clears throat> yeah. So Nikki Smith asks a question that has 18 votes, so it must be awesome. Let's see what the question is. <clears throat> what do you do when you're feeling stuck between what you're currently doing and what you want to do, but you aren't even sure what that is? What a great question. So before I even go to the second part, the answer to that question for me is fall in love with the moment. Sounds cliche, but you got to hold space for what you're feeling stuck with and what you want to be doing, even if you don't know what it is. Because what we do is we think there's a us that's the stuck story and then us in our leap, but we're actually this part looking at both of them, right? You're the space for both. So when you feel a split, do I go this way or this way? Your job is to go into your heart and discover that you're the space for both stories. See, most people think they're this story and that they shouldn't be in this story, but you're actually this story and you can love both stories, right? So Nikki says, I know I want to be doing something more, but I don't know how to go about it uh, or what it is. What a great question. I know I want to be doing something more, but I don't know how to go. So I want to look at why you want to be doing something more, because there's something in my body that feels from the way that question is written that you maybe feel you should, that like you were told you're not enough somewhere, that if you don't do more, it's not enough, right? And that might not be true. You might be, no, I'm called to do more. Something's expanding me. But I want to make sure you're not feeling guilty if you're not doing more, right? And what we got to make sure is that love is making the decision because there is a lot more you can do. But if it's out of any type of guilt, then it's hard for you to step into doing more. I'm being called to do more. I feel like not guilty. Got it. Okay, so the first thing to do is love you. So Nikki said that. So love yourself. Love yourself in the confusion. You're feeling stuck between what you're currently doing. Okay. So there's what you're currently doing. You feel stuck. Okay. Can you accept fully that you feel stuck or is there judgment of the stuck feeling? Do you get what I'm asking? Can you just start off with I'm feeling stuck and I love that. I'm feeling stuck and I love that because Judgment that I should be happy with where I'm at. Excellent. But you're not. So can you be okay with that? I'm not happy with where I'm at. And I love that I'm not happy with where I'm at. Do you get what I'm saying? Feel that vibration. So feel that vibration. I'm not happy with where I'm at. And I love that. Can you accept <laughs> that you're not happy with where you are? That's a weird question, but... I love that I'm not happy with where I'm at. Because what happens when I say that? I'm trying to love it, Nikki says. Cool. So I'd rather you just love it. Because if you're trying to love it and you resist it, you're going to keep feeling stuck. But stuckness can't work in your acceptance of stuckness, in your love of stuckness. Stuckness can't work in your full acceptance of it. God, I love being stuck. Try that for a second, Nikki. Oh, I love being stuck. It's so awesome to be stuck. I want to get more stuck. I want you to just feel the energy in that. I love being stuck. God, I love being stuck. It feels so good, right? Tell me what you're feeling when you say that, Nikki. I love being stuck. It feels so good. What do you feel when you say that, Nikki? I love being stuck. And everyone, whatever your dilemma is, say that. I love being blocked. I love being scared. I love being unsure. I love not knowing. You need to bring love because there's something in your mind that says, I got to fix this, but you're overlooking the feeling. You're overlooking what's going on inside, and that's your judgment of stuckness. The problem is you're stuck, not that you're stuck, but that you're judging your stuckness. So what happens, Nikki, when you feel that? What do you feel right now? I love the anxiety of not knowing where my life is going. Isn't that funny? Watch how much it doesn't work when you more you love it. 
Now, sometimes it might get louder because it's going to test you. Do you really love it? Keep going. I love that you're feeling more scared, right? Uh, Nikki, you got to, can you tell me about how you're feeling? Yes, I love being judgmental. I love feeling judgmental. I love feeling, I love my block. I love feeling overwhelmed. Feeling good. Nikki says she's feeling good. Yes. So see, you can't change the outside while ignoring the inside. This is example of, this is a great example of the entrepreneurial revolution. See, if she were to leap, if Nikki were to just leap to what she wants while ignoring the stuckness that's there, which is a, sim which is a symptom of your resistance to something inside of you, if she just switched careers, that stuckness would still not be looked at. And we need to look at the inside. So life is keeping you stuck until you learn to love you on an even bigger level, right? If you just change careers and get the career, that's just an addiction to stop you from looking at the inside. So yes, you're going to love what you love, but we can't go there until you look at the inside. Because the truest 10 is for you to look inside. The truest 10 vibration thing for you to do is look at this part of you that's scared of being stuck, that's resisting and judging being stuck. I love being stuck, which will release me being stuck, which is releasing it. Don't even say will. And don't even want to release it. I want you to actually love being stuck, not so you'll release it. Check that out, Nikki. Want to be stuck. Get more stuck. Notice the more you try to get stuck while letting go of what'll happen later, right? Because that's two steps. I just want you to love being stuck, not just be, I love you being stuck so we can get rid of it because that actually is not loving it, right? If you're loving being stuck so you can get rid of it, then you don't really love it. That's like loving a kid so they'll leave. They'll feel it. If you love a little kid so that they'll get away, they'll feel that. You got to love the little kid so they feel fully seen. But we can get into this, Nikki. Check this out. Where do you believe from your childhood that being stuck is bad? That's the challenge. We think stuckness is bad. Something happened in your childhood that said stuck is a bad thing. Do you get what I'm saying? Something happened that said stuck is a problem. Like you have to flow. We have to get somewhere else. It's something that you're trained to judge. You're trained to judge your stuckness. Why is stuckness a problem? Some people love being stuck because they don't have to go anywhere, right? Some people have a problem with something else. Some people have a problem with feeling. Sometimes people have a problem with uncertainty. Some people have, yeah, because I'm a school psychologist. Wow. So that could create another thing. We're here to get people unstuck. So the underlying belief is stuck is bad, right? There could be something there. I'm here to help people get unstuck right? So then your mind goes, so the job is to get unstuck. But how do you teach them to get unstuck? By feeling the actual thing, by being with the thing. So it's weird because even though you know that with other people, so Heather Gregory says, stuck feels like boredom. And boredom is something we believe is bad. To me, boredom is the best thing you can be. I have a video called Become as Bored as Possible. Because when you're bored, and you go for bored, you actually can connect to source. Do you get what I'm saying? The more you are actually fine with bored, going living in the woods for a month, then you actually can get connected to source. Boredom is not a real thing. It's a mental thing. It has nothing to do with if you have nothing to do. Boredom is a mental judgment of things not happening the way your ego decided things are happening. Because as they say in the movie, Peaceful Warrior, there's never nothing going on. There's always something going on. And if you pay attention to your heart beating, you'll never be bored. If you pay attention to the crazy complicated shit that's going on in your veins, in your breathing, there's millions of things going on. We've best just trained to ignore what's going on internally and pay attention out here. And then if there's nothing going on out here, we go, I'm bored. No, 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 no crazy shit's happening. You should never be bored. <laughs> you should always have, my heart is beating really fast right now, Nikki said. Good. That means you're moving past the belief of stuckness, right? I, you're moving past the belief of stuckness is a problem. You're loving stuckness. So your heart's beating fast because stuckness is leaving because you're liking it. You're okay with it. You know what you're doing. 
you're a space of love for the little kid in you that feels stuck. There's a child in you that feels stuck and you're bringing a space of love and you're saying to your inner child, it's totally okay for you to be stuck. And when the child inside of you hears, it has a free place to be completely stuck, it can be seen. And the second it's seen for real, then the stuckness will leave. Because it's not that you're stuck, it's that you're unseen by you. You're not stuck, you're not seeing you. And you are here to see what's under the stuckness. You are here to see the little child that feels stuck. And it's actually your five-year-old that thinks we got to be something. And if we're stuck, we're not going to be loved. If we're stuck, we're not going to be loved. That's what your inner child says. I got to be loved. If I'm stuck, I won't be loved. I got to be showing some type of movement. There's going to be judgment if I'm unstuck, if I'm stuck. So we're here. This is bringing up emotions. Excellent. So love the emotions that are coming up because emotions coming up are like you're emotionally puking a limited story because you're being awesome. Nikki says, thank you so much. Gosh, I feel so good right now. You are connecting more to the moment right now as it's becoming a space of love for the limited you that today doesn't serve you like it did yesterday. So the little you that has kept you alive up until today is finally being seen by the moment. And the more you're connected truly to the moment through meditation, the more it has to go into your body and say, we're going to pull out this limitation. The moment is going to work like a surgeon for you and remove everything you're not. You cannot meditate without it removing everything you're not. It's starting to go in there. And the more you connect to it, the more you're in the space to be able to really receive love. And you might feel yourself wanting to cry or actually puke. You might feel that, let it happen because you're safe after those tears and you're releasing and actually crying out the limited you that kept you alive in more painful situations, that kept you alive in more challenging situations. But when you meditate and you actually do this work that we're doing right now, you are showing yourself that you're not in that situation anymore. So that danger, that protection from feeling stuck no longer serves you. So it's leaving. That's what's actually coming out of your eyes. Nikki says, so glad my question is helping you all. I know we're getting a lot of tears. So we're doing major healing work for the world because you're crying out limited stories and you're bringing higher awareness. If you're feeling emotions right now, some of you are going to feel resistance. Some of you are going to feel anxiety. Some of you are feeling tears. All of those are signs. Everything you're feeling is not currently you. It's something leaving. If you can see it with your mind, it's not you. It's leaving. Isn't that amazing? Anything you can see that's leaving is not you because you see it and now you're the one looking at it versus your it. My heart feels like it's breaking inside. It isn't. Your story is breaking inside. Your story is breaking inside. And after you feel it fully, you will be more connected to your heart. Are you hearing that, Michelle? Or Michelle spelled Michelle, but Michelle, your heart feels like it's breaking inside. I promise you that's not your heart. That's your old story <sighs> because eventually I can prove it to you. Eventually you'll cry that out and your heart will still be there. So it's not your heart that's breaking. If you believe it's your heart that's breaking, you're going to try to stop it. It's your old story that's breaking. It's your old story. Someone said, will I get this moment? Will I forget this moment? No, because we have it on tape. You can have this forever. Um, isn't that fun? Uh, Alia says, I wanted you to know, since you answered my question last week about me having all the excuses not to come to your meditation retreat, 24 hours later, I got booked on it. Yes. And I also know that we had, <laughs> we had sold it out like 10 hours after you did it. So that meditation retreat sold out. So we're putting, I said last week, I said, it's going to sell out. And then it totally came out. Um, uh, and then it sold out. So just want you guys to know we're putting another one together and the Hawaii event is almost sold out too. So if you want to join us and spend, if you like this call, wait do you spend seven days with me and we work together intimately in Hawaii, please get on that. Remember if you have the absolutely everything passed, you have 20% off and you can come and you will make the money over and over and over and over again as you actually create an entrepreneurial experience for yourself. But you want to do this work 
for six, seven days and be in the immersion with me. So please join us on the Hawaii trip. Remember, it's for just 20 people. So please get that. I'm sure Lindsay is posting it up now, but please, please, please jump on the Hawaii trip. It's the best thing you can do with your time, energy, and money. It's you investing in you. You will never unlearn what you learn. Get your butt to Hawaii and do something different with your life, seriously. So Lindsay has the link up. Remember, absolutely everything, people have 20% off on that. 20% off. So that's huge. So join us in that. It's almost sold out. So we sold out the meditation retreat last week. And then a bunch of people asked us, can I come to it? And I'm like, I said, it's going to sell out. I'm telling you right now, Hawaii is going to sell out too. And then I'm going to take the year off. So if you want to do some big immersion shit, this is the time. All right. Hi, Kyle. Meditation. uh, And so Nikki, before I do that, actually, Nikki, did that answer your question? Nikki, you're feeling good. How's Nikki? Nikki sent a bunch of uh, Nikki, you're coming to Hawaii. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Nikki's coming to Hawaii, everybody. That's a leap. Come join us and show yourself your time is worth more than money because you're going to make both by dr- driving up your value. Spend six or seven days or whatever the hell it is with us. It's going to be amazing. So congratulations, Nikki, and I hope you're feeling awesome. That is my answer for you. Join us love you. I hope that helps. All right. I hope I pronounce your name right. Is it Eins or Innes? It's a beautiful spelling of a name. I don't quite know how to uh, pronounce it, but so good to be with you. Um, Where are you? Okay. Your question was, awesome. Your question was, Kyle, meditation and listening within also means to observe what is happening and to feel. Yes. What is your practice, when to take action, or when to hold on and wait before you take the next step or move? Sometimes your own actions can prevent something different or something else to happen. Correct. Yes. So here's my answer to that. That's a great question. One is sometimes I'll be in meditation and I will be driven to an obvious next step that I have to do. So there are times where I'll be in a deep meditation and almost always, as I've said before, at 46 minutes, some huge idea shows up. And it's always something that incorporates a bunch of other things, but it makes life easier. Often when it shows up, I break the meditation and I do something to make sure that that action is in play. So in the meditation, I will get out if it, if it pulls me. It's not something that like, what if that means this? And that. It's like, boom, do it. And usually it'll be through me texting the team and moving. Now, here's something that's so important you know. Every minute of your life could be a meditation. Do you guys remember last week when Renata was on the call? And we I have to tell you something crazy about that. This is crazy. Remember last week when Renata was on the call and I said, we're going to send you stuff. Well, we're putting together a giant package for Renata. And here's the craziest thing. Do you remember that I was in Washington, D.C. about to do the Birchmere last week, right? I was going to go do the Birchmere. Renata, we had this thing. We're giving you free food, right? And what have I always said? When you give or you leap, the universe responds, okay? So this is a true story. The next day I do the Birchmere Theater, okay? And I have a meet and greet for just the VIP people after the show. So this long line of people gets in. I meet people. I give them hugs. We, we, we hug. A ton of people give me their book, which is a very nice way of saying, I worked for three months to make your backpack heavier on the way home. So thank you for the books. Didn't get a chance to read them. But I got this beautiful long line of people that gave me their books. It was an honor. But I also was like, oh, now my bag home is heavier. But I've been enjoying what I've been reading. But at the back of the line, this woman comes up to me. And she has a company called Food Nerd. And she is a raw vegan chef and delivery corporation. And she had probably $200 worth of free raw vegan food for me while I was on the road. Right after I said to Renata, we're giving you free food, free food came right to me. So guess what I'm doing? Because she was so sweet and awesome and giving to me, I'm going to, first of all, promote her as Lindsay just put the link up while I said it. Foodnerdmeals.com. This woman makes incredible, healthy, raw vegan food and sends it to your house. So you don't have to cook. I get that there can be work there. I get that there can be, it can be money sometimes but also your health gets higher. So I'm gonna trade the money 
on spending a little bit more on organic, healthy, raw vegan food and save money on not going to the hospital as much. But what we're going to do, Renata, is I'm going to work with her to send her food to you. So we're going to all work together. I'm going to talk to her about making a deal with me. We'll pay for everything. But as I said to her, um, to Renata, we're going to give you a bunch of free food. The next day, a ton of free food came to me. So she gives this woman's amazing. She was on Shark Tank. She gave me bags of free food the day after I said, we're giving you free food. So right when I gave, the universe goes, here, here's the person to give. And Renata, we're going to send you a ton of her stuff. So it's incredible, healthy options. No preservatives, no sugar, nothing, all organic, healthy. You can see her website. Totally, we're just plugging her for free because that's the flow of giving. She gave to us. We give to her. We endorse her to the hundreds of you that are on this. Oh, the link doesn't work, it says. Well, we'll have to figure it out. You might have to Google her. And we might have crashed the site because there's so many of you looking. That actually could be happening. She might need to op open her server. Why? Because she waited in line to give me a bunch of food. She waited in line to give me... Oh, Lindsay tried another link. Does that work? Is anyone getting it? Foodnerdmeals.com. Is Link doesn't work. It works. Scott says it works. It might be too many people on it. <clears throat> But I want you to get the real point here. LinkedIn works. So some people are saying it works, some people didn't. Clearly, it doesn't have the load to handle all of us going on at the same time. There's a lot of us. But I want you to get what happened. This woman waited in line and gave me free food, didn't want anything in return. She just wanted me to have nourished food. She said, I'm a huge fan of what you do. I appreciate you. I just want you to have our food. It's on me. Gave me her card. Well, I started texting her. So you're going to be served. You're going, we're going to order from you every week. And I'm going to plug you to the people on the calls. Why? Because she did something selflessly. She didn't try to advertise. She didn't want anything for it. Now she's got work forever because I'm going to endorse her all the time. And she's going to help us. And we're going to help her, right? We're going to give her our products and give her stuff. We're going to all work together. This is how a win-win-win is. But when did it start vibrationally? I know it started the second I said to Renata, we're giving you a bunch of free food. You cannot give without getting back. It's the law of the universe. If you're in a place of selfless giving, the universe has to give you back. Now, to answer the question that was asked to me here, you can live in a meditation. When I was on the call, I wasn't last week, I was not sitting there with my eyes closed trying to find the right answer. But it was after 46 minutes on this call that I came up with giving Renata the free food. And when I said that, I was in a vibration that opened up. So you don't just meditate and get all the answers, you live in the meditation. And then you learn how to adjust as you keep going because the more you live in it, the higher and faster the things change, the higher things move. So I know the link didn't work, uh, but I'm sure it'll work later tonight. So Dina says, I don't see the entrepreneurial retreat. Are you talking about the Hawaii event or the product, the new video that we have? Marilee says, when's your birthday? It's September 19th, 1977. So <clears throat> there's some answers for you. The second we gave to her, it came back. It paid for itself immediately. And it will over and over because she gave, it's coming back to her. I hope you're getting that. So it's not just meditating and then making a decision and deciding. It's following your body and learning how to live in a meditation. Learning how to live in a meditation. My dare to you is to always be in a meditation. And you do that by following your heart, learning the next step, the next step, the next step. And sometimes I'm off. Sometimes I'm tired. Sometimes I totally need to realign. I actually have my friend Kieran here, who's a doctor and a chiropractor, and he's going to work on me right after this call. He's in the room. What's your website, Kieran? Oh, he's meditating. He's got a headphones on. <laughs> he's sitting next to me with headphones. He doesn't know I'm plugging him, and he doesn't. He doesn't. Hey, Kieran. Kieran. What's your website? Oh, lifeempowered.com. Check out lifeempowered.com. He's someone that's out here and he's going to adjust me and do an amazing spiritual work. But I have to, to do this work, 
have help for me too. We did the flow group this week and he was a space where he helped the other people at the flow group and then he helped me. And he's adjusting me right after this call to help me release all the energy that I picked up from doing the flow group. So right now I'm not quite as in the pocket as I could be, but I'm still fine with how I'm doing. But I'm just making the point that you can live in a meditation. So for me, instead of just being tired and then, right, like, watching a bunch of movies, I got to get this energy taken care of. Because when you do what your highest calling is, and then you do your work, sometimes you can pick up energy from other people. Sometimes you can be in the space where you have it. So I have to clear it out. So Life Empowered is my dear friend, Kieran, who offered to come out and work at Flow Group for free with me and help adjust me. And because he offered and was in that space and had something to actually offer that I needed, he's about to work on our team too. So he had a job. Did it really crash? Was it <laughs> the site crash too? <laughs> Everyone's going to your site at the same <laughs> time, so it keeps crashing. That's so funny. We, well, you can tell this. Our company's working because you guys are going to crash websites everywhere because there's so many of you now. But we're crashing servers everywhere. Oh, let's keep crashing servers. Go to people you don't like all at the same time. Let's do this. No, so fun, you guys. <clears throat> So we can crash sites everywhere by trying to get on it. But lifeempowered.com is Kira, and you might have to do it in a little bit. Um, and then uh, foodnerdmeals.com, living in the meditation. So I hope that answers your question, Eins, is it? Does it say Kyle's crash? Jesus. Take it easy, guys. <laughs> I don't think ours would. I think we got more and more space to do this. But I hope that answered your question. So sometimes our own actions can prevent different other things from happening. So our job is to stay in it and always only do something that's an even higher vibration. So you might, uh, so where is he located? He's Austin, but he's everywhere. He's been everywhere. Eens, that's how you pronounce it. Awesome. So he's been everywhere. He's been in the jungle doing this crazy research about how cacao works and affects your, he does this incredible body work. You got to check him out. He's an amazing guy, but he volunteered to come out and work and do healing on me. And he's helped me so much through the flow group and this work that I want to plug him too, because he's awesome. And actually he will add value to your life. So he's in Boulder. That's right. So he was Austin and now he's in Boulder, but uh, I'm trying to get him here. So he's going to be everywhere. But the website again is lifeempowered.com. Yeah. Right. Awesome. So, Yvette says, Kyle, I've only recently found you. I love when you say found in quotes because then I feel like a <laughs> weird guru guy. When did you first find Kyle? I'm so not one. That's why I'm wearing hats and weird shit. Okay. I've only recently found you and love what you're sharing and how you're sharing it. My question is, what advice can you give me to help me make bold requests of people? Yes, including myself. What a great question. Hmm. To make bold requests of people. Well, first of all, check this out. Your, your belief that something is bold is your own judgment, right? Everything we think is one way or another is a judgment, right? Like when people say you're just being extreme, well, it's not that you're being extreme. You're just being different than society's egos say things are, right? People say people that do things that are really amazing are extreme. Well, it's not extreme. They're just doing their thing, right? So one thing is to do is take the belief out that it's a bold request. You get what I'm saying? It's a request. Your judgment thinks that it's bold, right? It's a request. You have a request of yourself. Now, the ego might say requests that are normal are on this thing, and the requests that I have of myself are on this level. That's true, but it's only compared to the belief that this is you. The requests that you have are just you. So you change your nervous system by saying the requests, by honoring what you want. And your nervous system will not see them as giant, big, bold requests. They'll just see requests, right? I just have a request. I just have a request of you. And it might be too big to your ego. It might be too big to what I used to be, but it's not too big to me. It's normal. So you got to see the request you have as normal. For you to say, my time is worth a million dollars might be bold to what you used to be, but it's not necessarily bold to what you are. 
Do you get what I'm saying? To say, I need more boundaries might be bold to what you thought you were, but it's not bold to what you actually are. It's just your truth. If they're in your body as requests, they're just requests. They're not bold. They're just bigger than what you thought you were. And the real problem is that you think you are the smaller thing. Do you get what I'm saying? You are here in this moment and no request is bigger or smaller than any other request. In this moment, you can ask the same request that Oprah can ask. You can ask the same request as anyone else. We're all just this moment. And if you stop comparing your small story to what you perceive are other people's big story, it's not bold, it's just a request. And that takes the pressure off. It's a judgment that says this request is bigger than me, but nothing is bigger than you. And your job is to prove that to yourself. Your job is to prove to yourself that nothing is bigger than you. So you might need to meditate a while. You might need to follow your highest excitement. You might need to let go of things that no longer serve you, but nothing is bigger than you. Anything you've ever created ever isn't bigger than you because it came from you. Anything that you've ever uh, been scared of or created as a fear isn't bigger than you because it came from you. You are bigger than anything. Every problem at one point that you thought was bigger than you eventually was gone because you outlived the problem. And Michael Beckwith says, don't think how big is this problem and how I'm going to deal with this problem. Think, man, I feel sorry for the problem having to deal with me because you are bigger than the problem. There is no problem bigger than you. And your job is to just understand and prove to your nervous system that you are bigger than every problem, every challenge, every request. You are not bigger than any requests and that's not bold. You are bold just as a person and the requests are what come out of you. That's my answer for you, Yvette. Do you like that? Does that help you? Is Yvette even still here? I hope that helps you guys too. You guys are bigger than every single thing you perceive to be a problem or an accomplishment or a fear. Your perception is that it's bigger than you, but it's not. You are bigger than all of it. And you might go bullshit. And if you say bullshit, then you are going to try to prove to me how small your life is. And I dare you to go, you're right. I'm bigger than this problem. And I'm going to step into that part of me that's bigger than this problem. I'm going to step in to what I truly am. And if you show me bullshit, it's not that easy. You bullshit, it's not that easy to just create a new business. It's not that easy. You will do what you can to egoically prove to me how small you are. And the best case scenario for you in that is you'll prove to me how small you are. I dare you instead to prove to me how big you are because I know you're big and I dare you to meet me and how big you are. I dare you to join me in seeing yourself as big as I see you. And I dare you to love yourself as much as I love you because I'm meditating, I'm doing the inner work and I love me. And because I love me, I have a lot of space to love you too. And I dare you to join me in receiving how big I see you, how powerful I see you, how big I love you, and how thankful I am that you're here and in my life. I dare you to join me in it. And I will hold this space for you for the rest of my life. But it's up to you how long you want to delay your receiving of what I'm offering you. You can wait 10 years and then prove it and have 10 mediocre years. Or you can go, my time is precious and I'm going to join you right now. I'm the shit. You're the shit. We all shit for ice shit. You are amazing people. Join me in how powerful you are. Join me in meditating. Join me in making your time worth more than your money. Join me in making your leaps bigger than your small story. Join me in your yes more than your no. Thank you so much for being with me today, you guys. What an honor to be with you. Please watch the entrepreneurial revolution. You can watch it right now if you want. And next week, we will discuss it. So please make sure you watch it. I give you an exercise at the end. Do the exercise this week, connect to yourself, be there for the fear, be there for the excitement. And then next week, let's talk about it and we will create an entrepreneurial revolution. It doesn't matter if you have a business or not, it's going to be amazing. You guys, I love you. I'm thankful for you. I'm honored to be with you. What a fun night. Thank you for revving me up. Thank you for connecting to me. Have an amazing night. Goodbye, everybody. Take care.